Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Salia and welcome back to another video. Today I actually have a really, 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 really random video. Um, I essentially recently read I recently read Yoke by Marie H. K. Choi, um, and if you've been on YouTube, you obviously know she's really well known. It's no surprise, like she's not a new author or nothing like that. But anyways, I read her book and it has essentially solidified me as a Marie H. K. Choi fan. And so I just wanted to do a quick video about A, why I love this one, where I think I'd rank it amongst her other books, and just overall like what I like about this author and why she's essentially going to become an auto buy for me because I literally think she's getting better and better with each work that she puts out. So if you don't know, I will quickly tell you her works include initially Emergency Contact. This was her first book. Um, after that, she did Permanent Record. This was her second book. Uh, and then recently this year, oh no, recently this year she wrote uh, Yoke and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I can start with this one. So uh, Yoke is about two sisters who have kind of lost touch over the years, um, but they both happen to live in New York. And when one of them finds out that the other actually potentially has endometrial cancer, um, they kind of end up spending more time together than they normally would and it kind of forces them to go through or like work through some of their traumas as a kid and like their relationship and kind of what went wrong um, and through all of that it explores like so many different things as per all Marie H.K. Troy books. So I won't get too much into it but uh, that is the general premise. For people who haven't read the other two, Emergency Contact, like I said, was her first book. And actually, I find a lot of people, this was their favorite Marie H.K. Choi book. And if you were a fan of this first book, you actually probably didn't like the second two as much. Whereas a lot of people I found who thought this one was okay, um, ended up appreciating her second and third book a little bit more. For me personally, this one's about, I think he's having, I can't remember exactly, but I think Sam, the guy, is having a panic attack and then Penny like finds him or happens to see him and in order to like help, they exchange phone numbers and then they just start this text relationship. I'm missing a lot of nuance to it, but it's something along those lines. While this one was super cute, I definitely felt like it is the weaker of her three books. And I personally, like I don't know if this is true because I don't know the author, but I personally feel like for this one at least, she probably uses the most YA type tropes um, compared to the other two. And I think in part because this was her first book um, and maybe, I don't know, not that she wanted to play it safe. I don't know if like publishing influenced her or what, but I just felt like this one, Although all three of her books are technically new adults, I felt like this one actually feels the most YA of the three. And my suspicion is that once this one did well, she probably had a little bit more say in what she could write, or maybe she felt like bolder, I don't know. But I feel like the next two books, she really finds her style in, and they are very similar in a sense. Um, and I guess it depends on her fourth book what it's gonna be about. But if she follows the same trend, I feel like the second two books are kind of where her voice like truly wanted to go, you know, and this was kind of her experimental breakthrough novel. I hope I'm making sense. This is probably my least favorite of the three, but even then I loved it. I think her strengths definitely shined through in this one and then she just kind of polished them. And by books two and three, you were like, yes, 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 yes. So with that, maybe I can chat about like what she does well. I don't really want to give a synopsis of all the books because obviously you can go look them up. Um, they are all great is all I have to say, but I think the parts about her books that really shine through for me and the themes that I've seen come across all three of them would definitely be, she writes, so usually her characters are kind of new adult age, so like young 20s kind of off to university or they finished university and are kind of starting to look for jobs and stuff, um, but I would say the main things that all of her protagonists have in common is they're never like wholly happy characters. I find they're all slightly, like they have a reason to feel like their life's not going well. They have reasons to feel a little bit more depressed and anxious than the average individual. Um, and they all have definitely some aspect of them that's broken or they have character flaws um, that are quite prominent. But the thing that she does so, 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 so well is that she portrays these characters who have all these flaws and oftentimes are doing like shitty things, 
but in the most relatable manner. So even while they're doing all this, like even while they're ruining their own lives or while they're saying bad things, you can totally see where they're coming from. And even if you haven't experienced exactly what they're experiencing, on some level, you feel like you could also be there or you have been there in the past. Um, and I personally really appreciate that. Like I just think she has these really, really relatable characters. Um, and even when they're being trash, it's like, it's kind of hard to read about because you're like, damn, I don't want to admit that like, I could do that, but like as you're reading it, you're like, yeah, no, I definitely could be doing that. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest gifts she has in terms of her writing. I also think she just is so good at putting together like so many layers um, in the sense of like, while a character has one flaw and like that's the main um, problem or whatever that they're trying to work through, it never prevents that character from having like 15 other things going on at the same time. Um, and because of that, it just, it feels like it's really mimicking real life, you know? Like, the same person will have family issues and, like, work issues and then, like, side friends who are, like, I don't know, causing issues and then, like, financial troubles and then, like, also trying to figure out what they want to do for school or, or work or their career and it's just, like, non-stop and it's, like, so seamlessly put together that it just works. Like, you think it's going to be too much, but it works. Personally, I think that she got better and better and better at doing that throughout the novels. I don't know if I have set my particular ranking yet, but my ranking, I don't know if this will work out to left to right, but um, my personal ranking would be Emergency Contact as third, and then Yoke, um, and then Permanent Record. By far, I think Permanent Record is my favorite. That being said, I think some of the characters in Yoke are definitely my favorite characters. But I think just like the storyline and everything that's explored in Permanent Record, I like just a touch, just a touch more than Yoke. Um, and only because, so Yoke deals a little bit with like illnesses and the hospitals and like healthcare. And I think this is a total personal bias, but I'm just not super into reading about healthcare because I deal with it every day. Um, and personally, of all the types of medicine, like oncology is my least favorite. Um, so that's just like a total personal thing. If you don't care about that, you might think Yoke is the best. Um, I definitely think the writing in Yoke is the best. Like you can just see how much Marie H. Cl wow, Marie H. K. Choi has um, matured as an author. Um, I thought that the actual characters the best were the best in this one. I just I don't know, there's something about Permanent Record that I really, 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 really liked. I think because it surprised me a bit, like after having read Emergency Contact, I didn't expect her to go so dark so quickly. Um, and I think that now that I know that that's her style, I'm like, I'm enjoying it. But I think maybe the hint of surprise in the, her second book is what did it for me. Cause I was just really taken away by, taken aback, blown away, blown away by um, her second book. Um, I also say, I think that in terms of like love interests, Yoke by far, by far has one of the best love interests ever. I don't think I can read, I, I like don't know if I'll be able to find someone as like cute, wholesome and amazing as Patrick. Um, if you ever read, like if you read Yoke, I will say he's one of the best book boyfriends out there. If that's a thing you are into. He comes like really close to some of my favorites. Like Christian Ozera from the Vampire Academy, I've said several times, is one of my favorite guy characters in books. And Patrick from Yoke definitely comes very close, if not like on par. I'm trying to think. The only other thing that I really like about her books, um, I personally love all the Korean representation. It's like so cute to see. And I will say like about the Korean representation bit, like even that part, I guess this segues into another point that I forgot about, but like Marie H.K. Choi, you can just tell, is so cool. Like when you read the books, you're like, you know how usually you read books that are like meant to be for young adult or meant to be for teenagers and they put in these references and literally by the time the book has been published, the references are like 15 years old and you're like, I know you tried, but this was such a like for that five minutes trend that it just doesn't work for me. Whereas like you read her books and like somehow she knows how to make her characters seem like they are extremely in the present moment without it seeming like forced or without her having to show these, like without her using trends that kind of come and go. Like she's so good about knowing like this is just how young people act these days. Maybe she is young, I have no idea how old she is. So maybe it just comes from that. But you can just tell she's like so with it. Um, and one of my favorite things was that in the first like in all of her books, one of the characters is in some shape or form somehow Korean, whether it's like a quarter, a third, a half, full, whatever, 
some character is at least Korean. And specifically in Yoke, there's a character named Patrick. And at one point, he kind of offhandedly says how, like, once K pop, K dramas, Korean culture got big, he kind of became this, like, cool, fetishized thing. And I was like, how is she even so on point for that? You know what I mean? Like, her books have always had, like, Korean representation because she's Korean. But it was just so cool that she even acknowledges that in her books. Like, she was saying, like, like, even that aspect is being acknowledged, how, like, instead of her just taking advantage of the fact that Korean things are now cool and that she could just, like, market the book, she still takes the time to kind of explore that, yeah, it's kind of becoming fetishized and, yeah, it's in right now and so everybody wants, like, an Asian boyfriend or whatever and it was just, like, a cute touch, you know? And it was, like, it wasn't even a lot, it was, like, two sentences, but throughout the books, like, she does that several times, and it's those small hints of things, like, that attention to detail that I think makes the book so good. The other thing that I find so good about her books, they're, oh, my hands are getting tired, so I'm just gonna hold them down here. The last thing I kind of want to say about her is that her books just kind of fill this niche that I don't see a lot of other books in, and that's this new adult genre. Like, I feel like there's been so many videos out there that say, like, we need more new adults. It just doesn't exist. And a lot of new adults is kind of marketed as YA when it should be new adults, but there's just not enough of a market for that. And what I love so much about her books in particular is that they are on the spectrum of literary fiction, but they're not quite like as dense and as difficult to read and like you know what I mean? Like as artsy and flowery as literary fiction, it's like this beautiful in between. So like if you are just a little bit too old for YA and you want to dip your fingers, toes into literary fiction, but you don't quite want to go there, I think her books are such an amazing segue between the two because the pacing, the amount of detail she puts into like her prose, um, and then the character relationships and how much she focuses on characters. It's all very reminiscent of literary fiction, but it's just not quite as dense as adult literary fiction. And so I just think it's like an excellent, excellent way for you to get started. Um, and I personally, like, I love her books for that reason, because it's this great combination of a little bit of YA, but also literary fiction and stories for young people that takes the time and the nuance necessary to explain or like to showcase, you know, the complicated relationships that young people can have. And yeah, <laughs> again, I have no idea where I was going with this video. I just kind of wanted to talk about Maria H.K. Choi and why I love her books and why she's now an auto buy author for me. And yeah, and if you've read her books, please let me know what you thought, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, what your complaints were, what your criticisms were, or, you know, if you want to gush about Patrick, that's cool too. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!